to Empowering Survivors. I had missed the sentencing on Friday. I had another something else to do that day. And so I was like, well, might as well watch it together with you guys. So a few things that I just wanted to say real quick before we get started is that if you haven't noticed, I did change the name of my channel from Empowering True Crime to Empowering Survivors. And that's pretty much because, one, I was really um, just not aligning anymore with like the true crime content. And it was getting really heavy on me. And I really want to focus on what we can do, how we can help what um, learning lessons we have. And I think that switching to more survivor-focused content over true crime content, uh, like, for example, I'm not really into speculation or all that stuff. Like, that's just not me. And I do, I will still continue to cover some true crime news like I am doing now with this. But I, I'm going to really try to focus more on supporting uh, survivors, um, you know, whatever we can do to help a victims, justice, advocacy, more on that side than the other side. But I wanted to start before we get into the sentencing, just kind of giving a little background on what happened, just a quick background. And I'm going to read a little part of this obituary. This is um, the woman who died is Rebecca Bernadette Possel Bleefnik or Becky Bleefnik, as she's uh, often referred to. And she was 41 years old when she died in February. And the um, she had three little boys. They lived in Quincy, Illinois. She was actually separating from her husband. She was in the process of separating from him. This is Tim Bleefnik who he was on Family Feud. And I had like a mind blown moment this morning when I was putting this together, when I was putting the the uh, the image for this together, the, what do you call it, the thumbnail? Because it's called Family Feud. And he ended up having like a Family Feud in real life. And um, the reason that he gets all this notoriety is that the Family Feud question that he answered was something like um what what uh what do you regret about your marriage or about your wedding and he answered saying i do and so a lot of he got like a lot of flack for that it was seen as like you know he was obviously joking but people are like wait, wait well was he really joking because this was only a couple of years a few years ago so uh, yeah, so that's why this kind of raised up to that level because he was on Family Feud. And so just something here, I just wanted to read. Becky graduated summa cum laude from the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. And she gave birth to her third child during spring break of her senior year, only missing one day of school. Becky worked for Quincy Medical Group before transitioning to the hospital's emergency room. And during the COVID pandemic, she additionally worked as a travel nurse. In 2020, Becky was nominated for the International Daisy Award, which honors exceptional care given by extraordinary nurses. The nomination testimony stated, I got to kiss my husband and tell him how much I loved him, all because of Becky. Beyond her registered nurse credentials, she was also a certified trauma nurse specialist and a sexual assault nurse examiner. At the, at the time of her death, she worked at Blessing Hospital in Vascular Access and was working toward her nurse practitioner certification. And then she was also super dedicated to her boy. She had three boys. And um, she seems like not only was she incredibly smart and successful and a leader, she was very giving. She was service driven, just an amazing, amazing woman. I mean, like this is a huge disservice to the community that she is no longer with us. On top of that, of course, her boys. So without further ado, um, now that we said a little bit about her background, let's go ahead and watch the sentencing. And I, as I said earlier, I missed it. So now I want to share it with you guys. Mr. Bleefnik, before I sentence you, you have a right to make a statement to me. Is there anything you'd like to say? No, Your Honor. 
the court has considered the pre-sentence investigation report, has considered the addendums there too, has considered the victim impact statements that were given in court, has considered each and every factor in aggravation and mitigation, and the arguments of counsel that were made here today. Mr. Leifnick, you researched this murder, you planned this murder, you practiced this murder, you broke into her house, and you shot her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen times. I don't know how long it took you to do that. Some of those shots were fired while she was lying on the ground. And you did all of that while your children was up, were upstairs at your house, lying snug in their beds. The court believes that the appropriate sentence for each of the two counts of first degree murder would be natural life in prison. Court believes that the third count of home invasion, appropriate sentence is life in prison. Those three sentences will merge together into one life sentence. Recap. Okay, so he got natural, one natural life sentence. He was actually sentenced to natural life for first degree murder, natural life for using a firearm to commit murder, and home invasion. And he said that they merged all into one life sentence. Now, one thing I wanted to show. Uh, just a couple of little things that I picked up on. That at one point, he promised to... I'm actually going to put that on mute. Is the look on the defense attorney's face. <laughs> she looks like... Like... I don't know. She's walked into a horror movie. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um... And it's it it might it occurred to me that maybe the reason that Tim Bleefnik is facing that direction and you don't see his face is because he knows where the camera is and doesn't want to be seen. It, did, it just occurred to me maybe that's why because that's exactly how it was in the last time during the the verdict reading. So I thought that was there in which this crime occurred. And then I wanted to rewatch. Thank you, Mr. Jones. The Mr. Bleefnik, before I sentence you, you have a right to make a statement to me. Is there anything you'd like to say? No, Your Honor. The court has... So sometimes the defendant says something, sometimes the defendant doesn't say something. In the Murdoch trial, Alec Murdoch trial, he spoke. In the Lori Vallow trial, she spoke. And, um, and, and, and Tim Beliefnik has chosen not to speak, which I don't know if I were wrongly accused of a crime, I would probably want to speak and defend myself like some of the others have done. Considered the pre-sentence investigation report, has considered the addendums there too, has considered the victim impact statements that were given in court. Has. I want you to also look at the defense attorney's look here, too. It's interesting as well. Mr. Leifnick, you researched this murder. You planned this murder. You practiced this murder. You broke into her house and you shot her. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 times. I don't know how long it took you to do that. Some of those shots were fired while she was lying on the ground. And you did all of that while your children was up, were upstairs at your house, lying snug in their beds. The court believes that the appropriate sentence for each of the two counts of first degree murder would be natural life in prison. Court believes that the third count of home prison, court believes that the third count of home invasion, appropriate sentence is life in prison. Those three sentences will merge together into one life sentence. And then Mr. Bleefnik, I need to give you. Okay. So, wow. I mean, not necessarily unsurprising that he would get life in prison, one life sent or at least one life sentence for, for this. Um, so that was interesting. And that part where the, where the judge was like, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, like that was up until 14. That was really impactful. And, um, the, one of the things that the, the, the defense attorney did today or in the sentencing, and she did this way back before is she tries to portray him as this like nice guy. She brought up and this in, in particular, you know, she brought up, he was educated. He, she, he was, he was employed. He was a youth football coach. He was a church leader. And they use that, and obviously no prior criminal record, which is a consideration in the court. Same thing happened with Lori Vallow. No prior, uh, no prior record. And also part of the reason why these cases end up getting so much attention is because they aren't your typical, what, what the defense attorney calls the worst of the worst. They aren't the typical, you know, um, what does he call it? Like the, the criminal, lifetime criminals that are are committing are committing murder um but one thing another person who was also a church leader and a boy scout leader was the btk miller killer uh dennis raider he was you know going on boy scout trips leaving there committing murder and then going back to the Boy Scout, you know, trips. He was a church leader also. And so to make the statement, and I, and I understand why the defense attorney does it, but it doesn't mean they're not killers. And in this case, he was the, one of the most dangerous times for domestic violence victims is right when they're breaking up with someone before, during, or after leaving toxic or abusive partners and Becky was in the process of getting divorced apparently for two and a half years and she made the statement that if anything happened to her to look at him to look at Tim so she was already fearing for her life she thought she was in danger and so it's very very sad and but I I'm so I love the victim impact statements because they really sh showed a beautiful side of, of Becky and how much she was loved. Her mom spoke, her sister spoke, her brother-in-law spoke, her cousin spoke, and two aunts, I believe, two aunts spoke. So what did you think? Did you, I mean, I'm sure most people felt that he was going to get the full sentence, the life sentence. Um, Ch Chicago, I mean, um, Illinois apparently does not have the death penalty. So um, it wasn't a surprise to me. I thought he was going to get the life sentence. But, you know, the defense always has to try to see if they can get leniency, mercy. You know, like she, they brought up hope that he could be a, a citizen again. 
They did have, though, a pre-trial sentencing report just like in Illinois, just like in Idaho. So that's why here, as well as in Idaho, the uh, the sentencing is like a month or two after the verdict. In the case of the Leticia Stalk trial, her verdict and sentencing was on the same day. So that was also long, but that's because there was a verdict and a sentencing on the same day. That was in Colorado, right? That was in Colorado. Well, um, what did you think? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And, you know, let's just take a moment of silence for Becky, Becky Bleethnik, a beautiful light. I mean, she was not only beautiful, but she was an amazing mother. She was a nurse. She was caring. She was compassionate. She was of service. She was charitable. She was a woman of faith. And she was executed for what? You know, for what? So that he could have the children 100% of the time and look what happens. Now he gets the children 0% of the time. Just so, so senseless. So let's just take a moment of silence for Becky. And let's hold her boys, her three boys in our prayers. Her boys are Deacon, Grayson, and Arlen. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much. If you can, hit the thumbs up so that we can get this into the, the algorithm and people can see it. And also let me know what you think. Drop a comment. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you join the Empowering Survivors family. We are we want to be a voice for the voiceless support survivors, victims, missing persons, and and just overall, just you know, be the empowering community, empowering voices for those who can't speak for themselves. So with that, appreciate you being here and uh We'll be doing a lot of lives this week, so look out for that. And uh, with that, stay safe, stay thriving. Remember to trust your intuition, trust your gut, and make sure to keep empowering. Bye for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. Thank you.